Well, welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Russell Jackman. Hope your you're only here. co-host. Well, maybe. It depends. I, Vern Glenn may or may not be able to join us. We, you can always count on me. You can always count on uh, Mr. Jackman, though. We appreciate that. Hey, at each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And uh, today is somewhat hard NBA questions. We just okay. know how you love the NBA. Yeah. Uh, I, try to, I try to tailor this a little bit, you know, toward you, especially since uh, the season started already. Last week was pretty tough, so I'll give you that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make I never, you- never thought Allen Iverson had 15 steals in a game. So that, uh, Yeah, isn't that amazing? That was, that was a good trivia question. Yeah, that was uh, for uh, in the playoffs. I'm yes. not sure what the record is non-playoff. Yeah. Something like 20, 20 or something like that, you know. That's ridiculous. I mean, you imagine. Yeah, that's, uh, people have to kind of handle the ball a little bit better if they're going to yeah. give up 20 steals. 20 yeah, assists but... is something, but 20 steals is something else. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Or 20 rebounds is pretty good, too. Uh, let's see here. A few things that I wanted to cover. Uh, the Clippers losing by more than 50 points without Kawhi Leonard. Can you imagine what it's like having one guy make that much of a difference on your team? And uh, also uh, something about uh, Washington's uh, Dwayne Haskins. Oh, God. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Hey, uh, did you see Curry uh, do that um, uh, snippet that they showed that he made 105 three-pointers in a row in practice? And now can't make any during a regular game, but yes. Yeah, and that's that's kind of a huge thing. Um, he should be giving lessons to Kelly Oubre. Yeah, well, you know, the season just started, so these guys, you know, they got to get got to get back. Three games the- in, and Kelly Oubre hasn't hit one yet. It's okay. Hey, Willie Mays went like one for nineteen. And we- Oubre is no Willie Mays. Well, that's true, but but it just kind of shows you that even the greats can uh, start off not, not not doing well. Of course. Kelly Oubre is not a rookie, whereas uh, no, and Mays was a rookie. Uh, so, some of the greats start off that way, and then some of the really bad ones start off that way, too. All right. Stay, stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman. Hey, by the way, the uh, last segment was uh, of Sports Econ 101 was sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments currently yielding over 7.5%, secured by real estate primarily in California, I uh, got to check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. All right. So first of all, uh, the Clippers, they lost by more than two uh, people. Yeah, that was, that was something. I mean, and, and the thing is, it's like, you know, you go, okay, well, Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, but I mean, is, was it that much of an impact? The one Apparently guy? Apparently so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, they, 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 they absolutely rolled over for Dallas and, uh, yeah. Let Dallas have a fifty-point lead at the half. I, I wonder anyone who had the uh, 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 Clippers on that one is <laughs> obviously that's when you leave the leave Vegas and never return. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'll take the Clippers and forty-seven points. You know, that's a shoe in. Right? <laughs> well, they also showed how um, there was a game that was uh, the over/under was a hundred and thirty-two and a half points. And they were showing on, and there was there was only twelve seconds left in the game, and it was there was I think nine points left in the spread, and the they still managed to go over the spread in twelve seconds. Wow! Yeah, that was all for you know free throws and three pointers. That's amazing. And again, somebody in Vegas who was probably just ripping up their ticket. It's like, wait a minute, let me, <laughs> let me take this thing back together. That's why you just, you just never that's do that. That's why I don't gamble on sports. I swear to you. I, yeah. I just don't gamble on sports because that sort of thing just happens a lot. I'd rather yeah. gamble on dice or cards or, or the stupid slot machines. Than well, at least if you play poker, money. it's like you against other people. You know, I, I get that. Yeah, the, uh, the thing about betting on sports, you know, I, I stopped doing it many, many years ago. Because I couldn't enjoy the games anymore. Yeah, that's I, right? the whole thing. Yeah, is that I want to enjoy sports for what it is. Fantasy football is one thing. You know, I don't have any money invested in fantasy football. Just a ton of emotion put into yeah. it. But but I, you know, I don't. I don't. If I'm going to make money or lose money, I'd rather do it on something that is is invented for that purpose. 
So yeah. roulette or dice or cards or slot machines, what have you, those were invented for gambling. I don't mind gambling on that. But gambling on other things that I want to enjoy, you're right. You, you tend to, to focus more on the numbers and you'll be exactly. like, ah, oh, even though my team won, they didn't win by enough, therefore yeah. they suck. Well, it's the same thing with you. You mentioned about roulette and dice. It's it's not human error, or human interaction that can alter the chain. You know the thing. It's just the, the, by chance. Um, yeah. In fact, I remember uh, when I was a kid, we used to uh, look at Wednesday. They would have the point spreads, and then what my uh, brother and my dad and I would do is we would uh, pick. You know, whatever, whatever team doesn't matter. Um, we go every single game, and then. Uh, Sunday, you know, we'd be watching football and keep track of, you know, did you win by more than the points? You know, because it didn't matter. You could take either the favorite or the uh, or the underdog, and you didn't get you didn't get paid for winning. You only had to put money in the kitty if you lost. And at the end of the year, what we'd do is just to total up the money and then go out and you know go bowling and have a soda or something like that. And it was really fun because you you cared about games that you wouldn't really care about too much and it wasn't a huge amount of money that we were doing it was just kind of for the fun of it uh and so something like that yeah it's kind of that was kind of fun but when you start betting you know a thousand dollars on a game you know it's like even if you can afford to lose it's just it just totally changes the impact yeah and you can't watch a game for the enjoyment of it you have to watch it because you're caring about a point spread or you're caring about, you know, a yardage thing or something yeah. like that. And it really, it, your, your ability to focus on the game itself kind of goes by the wayside. You're just caring about those spe specific and, you, you, statistics. And, and even if you were to bet on something like uh, which player is going to score the first touchdown, you know, uh, or, her, or, or, you know, which team, yeah, which player, let's say. And – after the let's say in the first three minutes you, your guy doesn't score then you're done you don't even care about the game well that's the thing is is then you know you sort of put it out of your mind but you're still a little frustrated during the whole game right you know, and, and, you know, absolutely absolutely okay. yeah now that's why the I, last time i bet on a football game was i was in vegas and that's mm -hmm. how long ago it was my kids yeah. weren't even born um and i put 40 bucks on the 49ers to win in a preseason game against Seattle. And I do remember as soon as I won that bet, I was like, cash out, get my money, you know, buy myself dinner. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I was like happy with it. I didn't let it ride or try to put it on something else again because I was nervous during the whole game. You know, yeah. were the Niners going to win? Were they going to lose? Are they going to just put out, you know, terrible uh, 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 players for the rest of the preseason oh, yeah. game? Yeah. You know, it was truly a gamble. I had no idea if they were going to win or not. And, you know, just being nervous during the whole game and, and like, you know, uh, 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 anticipating whether or not your team is going to win puts too much pressure on the enjoyment of the game. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, the, the one time that I did um, really enjoy – when I actually did bet only because I thought this is such an easy choice. It's like, I know I'm going to win. And, and, and so I got to enjoy winning as well as the game. And that was the Super Bowl between uh, the 85 Super Bowl uh, bears against Patriots, Steve Grogan and, and McMahon. Right. And yeah. they were, they, the, the point spread kept going down and down and down. And it was only like seven points. And I looked, and I said, the bears are just going to trounce them. And so I bet $500, and this was back in 85, you know, uh, on the Bears, and we were in Vegas, and it was like, I mean, I just knew I was going to win, so I just kind of watched, I go, this is going to be a great game, and it was fantastic. Did you yeah. hear how Charles Barkley, on the air, said he would bet $100,000 on Portland to win the NBA championship this year? He just said, he's, he made the public announcement that he would take, the, the money that he gets from DraftKings, he said, for endorsements. Uh -huh. He's going to put on Portland Trailblazers. If he wins, because he's called it this early in the season, he would get $2.8 million. 28 to 1. 28 wow. to 1, yes. So, and has he actually placed the bet? Yeah, I think what they did was uh, DraftKings took what they were paying him for his endorsements and just put that on the Portland Trailblazers. 
So unfortunately, he has to already pay taxes on the hundred thousand, though. Right, this right. So either way, down. whether he wins yeah. or loses, <laughs> but then when he if he makes two point eight, he'll owe a lot in taxes. He'll owe a lot of taxes, so we'll yeah. But, I'm, but I'm I thought that was pretty, pretty gutsy well. to to throw that out on the air. That so, but gonna, it, like, that's true. Believe so much in the team that you're going to put a hundred thousand dollars on him. And did he say why Portland specifically? Oh, he loves uh, son. Uh, he loves uh, uh, Enos Cantor, and they have uh -huh. the best backcourt and. McCollum and and uh, Lillard oh, yeah. and so on. Well, and so Lillard forth. is due. I mean, he keeps coming up short all the time. Yeah, I, for him, a hundred thousand dollars is literally nothing because he, yeah. he he gets the endorsement already from DraftKings, so he, it's not even his salary. It's just you know uh, uh, he either does commercials free for a year for yeah. uh, for uh, DraftKings or he makes I wonder, I wonder how much he makes because you know he does other things like uh, you know on, on the lot of endorsements a lot yeah. of lot yeah he, he was he, he was but, even on he was even on Shark Tank for an episode but he gambles a lot too so yeah. we don't know how much of it comes in and then goes out if ever there was a whale out there it would be uh, Charles Barkley yeah. <laughs> and you know what's crazy is that if you it's like the stock market if you if you took a hundred thousand and turned it into two hundred thousand, you would be so happy. But if you took a hundred thousand, turned it into a million, but then let it let it ride, and it came all the way down to three hundred thousand, you'd be so upset. But yet you'd still be, we have done better. All right, here's our first trivia question on the NBA. Somewhat hard questions. Who became the first high school player who was a number one overall pick? to skip college and be drafted to the NBA. I think I know this one. Okay. So remember. He was one of coming, my favorite players. I, on, I really coming, like him. Coming if, from if, high school. If my answer's right, then. Okay, then, well, then hold on. Coming from high school, he was the number one overall pick to skip college and be drafted to the NBA. Stay with us. You are listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman, our first Trivia question, uh, all NBA questions, uh, somewhat hard ones. Who became the first high school player who was the number one overall pick to skip college and be drafted to the NBA? Moses Malone? No. Oh, okay. It wasn't Moses. Sean Kemp, and it wasn't Kobe Bryant. Huh. It wasn't LeBron James. And if it wasn't Moses Malone, was it Bill Willoughby? No, it was Kwame Brown. By the Kwame Brown, huh? In the, in the 2001 draft. I know, that one's really surprising. So Moses was not the number one overall pick. I, was, I always thought he was. Pick. Yeah, because there was a bunch of guys. I love Moses Malone. I thought he was a fantastic player. Yeah. And Sean Kemp, remember, I think? Was, was oh, Sean yeah, Kemp? yeah, absolutely. Well, Sean Kemp now has a cannabis business. I saw oh, him that's right. on, uh, on uh, a sports talk show with uh, Gary Payton, where they had huh. a, a long discussion about, like, cannabis use and, and how, you know, it was so ostracized for so many years, but it's it's now really hit a level of acceptance and that, you know, hopefully it'll no longer be tested in the NBA. And because it's legal in so many states now, the recreational use is allowed in so many states that the NBA plays, so many of the cities, it's legal. But what it's about, kind of stupid about, to about, test for it. But is there have anything to do with the THC level versus regular old cannabis? Yeah, well, it shouldn't even be tested for. It, it's not something that, you know, uh, that, that is a performance enhancer like steroids. Or, oh, no, it's not. And yeah, because it's not illegal, you know, um, I don't see why they have a, a reason to test for it in the NBA. Interesting. Uh, you'll have to put on your lawyer hat and, uh, and write for some of the uh, – players to uh, get it legalized yeah I, I would think so and then um oh you know in answer to your previous non-trivia question which was uh who has the most steals in a regular season game oddly enough it's less than than uh than the playoffs than than uh it was either uh larry uh it was either um uh uh not larry Bird. Uh, larry keenan or yeah. or kendall gill with the most number of steals, oh. with 11 steals in a game. Interesting. So uh, we, we didn't have to necessarily put a caveat of... Um, yeah, you had to say it was the playoffs. Cause yeah, I didn't have to say the playoffs. Could have just said what's the most steals in any game. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on a little bit. Uh, so last week, I, I, we didn't get a chance to talk about this, but the Blackhawks are not changing their name, Chicago Blackhawks. 
Uh, they claim it honors Black Hawk, a Native American leader from Illinois. Uh, Sac and Fox Nation, not familiar with that name, but okay. Now the Chiefs and the Braves have no plans to change their name. And again, you know, that's not really a derogatory term. I don't yeah, think. but the uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. but is. that's what people doing it, and I hate that thing. That I do too. Really annoying thing. So one well, thing I didn't miss with the crowds being gone. I, you know what? I was thinking the same thing. So now, but here's another thing though. Technically, there are no Native Americans, as we all came from somewhere else, right? I mean, haven't the the, the paleontologists and all those guys said? You know, we all come from Africa, started off in Africa. I don't know. They're finding out that. more and more info. I mean, considering the world was all like one giant continent for a long time, you know, it is kind of hard to say where people actually, quote unquote, came from. Yeah. I mean, we, we all had to, if you, you know, we all had to kind of, if you go back generation, 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 right? Yeah. You, you start off with two people, don't you? Right? Maybe. Well, you can't have one. Well, no, but maybe, you know, one, it was, you know, uh, depending on whether you believe in evolution or not, I guess. I don't want to alienate the audience. Although, if you don't believe in evolution, feel free to not listen to this show. That's that's the way I, I look at it. You can you can drop off as a viewer, if you, a listener or a viewer, if you don't believe in evolution. I don't want you here. Well, well wait a minute. That, that's me. You don't believe I, I, in evolution? I, no, it's because it's actually been scientifically disproven. Not just forget religion, forget all that stuff. I'm talking science. Because if you're you think saying about that we it, were all created in six days, and the Earth's only yeah, six yeah but that, okay, that's old. that's another topic. That's another topic. Okay, but it's like when you talk to the evolutionists, they say we all come from rocks. I mean, literally, they will they will no, yeah, a rock changed into this, changed in. It's like another one question I always have for evolutionists is. How do you get life from non-life? You can't, because they say, well, it all, like, say, Big Bang, right? Well, yeah, but, but who created the Big Bang? I mean, something, what started in the beginning to create that first life? Yeah, and but I could thing. turn it back on you and say, what would create God? So, you know. Well, see, but I don't have to explain that, right? Because I can, I can say that that's yes, outside do, of my understanding. Yes, you do, because God exists on faith. And if there's that's nobody true. to believe in God, then he doesn't exist. No, that's not true. That's like saying if the, the the tree in the forest, if it fell and nobody heard it, did it actually make a sound? Sure, it made a sound. Just nobody heard it. But there was no forest to begin with. If you're saying well, that there's no okay, that, forest that, there that, to even begin with, then well, there was no tree to fall in it. Here, here was one of the questions I was also thinking about with an evolutionist, because you know I've done a lot of study on this stuff, right? And it kind of makes sense when you go, well, what are the what are the odds also that the the you know how you know okay we, we we come from you know whales climbing on the land blah 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 if you have if you get the one in quadrillionth to the power to get the first purse first thing what are the odds that it's going to find a mate that is also you know an opposite right male female to create the next one yeah you understand what well, I mean? you've got billions of years to time. work with so you've got billions of of, of of odds, you know, the odds go in the, the, the X number because you have so many billions of years. And we don't know that, that life didn't come here from another planet, that it didn't. That, well, well that, that's, that's true. And, 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 and I'm not, and, and I'm, see, that's the thing is I'm, I'm not uh, going that far just because who knows, who knows could be that. But, but here's, here's the funny thing. Do, do you know what the law of entropy is? The, the yes. second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, it, the, it says, the, neither created nor destroyed. Well, no, 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 that's the first law. The second law is that things go from order to disorder. In other words, if I take a brand new Mercedes and I put it out in the middle of the desert, in a, in a thousand years, it will not turn into a Boeing 747. And the longer the time, if I say, well, let's give it a billion years, what will happen? It'll actually disintegrate to, to nothing, won't it? So the problem with the evolutionists in that is what they do is they, they keep adding years. Because like when I was a kid, uh, the evolutionists said, oh, the, the earth is 3.6 billion years old. Now they're saying it's like 6 billion. That soon, in 100 years, they'll say, ha, ha, those silly people, it's well, a that's trillion because years science, old. Right? The, science goes forward and, and discovers more things and gets better testing. And Well, and here's the problem, though. The method. more time you add, the worse things are going to get, not better. That's what I'm saying is that if you take a, if you take a brand-new Cadillac and put it in the desert, 
in a thousand years, it's going to be X. If you say a billion years, suddenly it'll turn into a 747. That's the opposite. Well, but go no, down. In, that, in that sense that, 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 that matter is neither created nor destroyed, you're having things turn into other stuff. It doesn't necessarily Co correct, turn into but, 747. But, so, so if I were to take, in other words, let, let's say I take the Mona Lisa and I rip it into a thousand pieces and I drop it from a 10-foot ladder. What are the odds that that will magically turn back into the Mona Lisa? Okay, let's say a thousand to one. Let's just pretend, right? And then you say, hmm, no, what we have to do is we have to drop it from an airplane and drop it from 30,000 feet, and that'll give it a better shot at it. That's what adding more years to the evolutionary billions and trillions and quadrillions of years does. It makes it more impossible rather than less possible. But in can. that time frame, someone else could recreate it. So you don't necessarily have, have to create it from one source. It doesn't have to come from one source. It come from myriad other sources. Like, like another planet type created. of thing? So, you yeah. know, yes, it would, it would not be the exact same thing. It would be duplicated the exact same level somewhere else by somebody else over time figuring it out on their own. So that's, uh, that's where I'm, yeah. I'm on the evolutionary <laughs> side. And okay. you can send your emails to me if you don't believe in evolution. You send your emails <laughs> to me because I'm sticking with it. Well, okay. I'm, but I'm I, I want to see the fossils that I've seen. But uh, the fossil, you know, do you know how they date the fossils? Yeah, the uh, carbon dating. By the, well, the guy who invented carbon dating says you can't accurately measure anything past 5,000 or 10,000 years. But they, they measure it by the rocks they find next to the, the, the fossils. Do you know how they age the rocks? By the fossils they find next to it. It's a circular argument. Listen, Mr. Jackman, I have done many years of scientific research on this, not forget, like I said, forget religion, forget theories, right? Because I could just invent any old thing and say, well, here, I wrote it on a piece of paper. It's on the internet. It's got to be true, right? So you and I will have this conversation at a longer time. Yeah, we'll have to have Other than sports, because we've one. been spending a lot of time not on sports on this. Hey, one last thing before we get to our next break. Knuckleballer Phil Negro died at age 81 just recently. So did Danny Hodge and so did Brody Lee, who was a wrestler, was only 41 years old. Oh. Yeah, another terrible wrestling death occurred. And Danny Hodge, who was 88 and also one of the greatest, uh, what they call shoot fighters of all time. What's that? And uh, he, he was one of the, the uh, 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 like one of the original types. Uh, I mean, he, he wrestled with guys like Carl Gotch and, and, and George Hackenschmidt and some of the, the really ancient, you know, original. <laughs> if he was 88 years old, then yeah, you are going to have Even at age 80, there's a picture on his Wikipedia page of him crushing an apple really? in front of uh, the state legislature. I like, I like still to see had, that. He apparently had double tendons in his hands that made him so strong he could crush apples. Just wow. To, yeah. I, I would not want to wrestle that guy. All right, here's our second trivia question. Who led the league? This is the NBA hard questions. Who led the league with 3.91 blocks, which obviously you can't have 0.91, but we get what they're talking about, per game in the 1994-1995 season? Who led the league? 3.91 blocks in the 94-95 season. Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101 and the non-evolutionary talk. Uh, and the non-Vern list talk. You see, when we don't have Vern here, we go all over the place. That's true. That's he, true. Keeps us, he keeps us in the, he That's keeps true. us secular. But you know what? When people are either driving, listening to us on Sirius XM or driving around with their radio on, they're going, huh, this is a little different than a typical sports show. That's fine. Hopefully, they, hopefully they're not you know, turning the dial. That's know? right. Don't turn the dial. Okay. Who led the, who led the league, talking the NBA, with 3.91 blocks per game? So almost four blocks per game in the 1994-95 season. I'm going to say Elijah Wan. No, that, that was a good guess. So or, if, okay, if it's not Elijah Wan, is, was it Mark Eaton? No. Oh, but but uh, I'm gonna I'm going to the audience can't see this but I'm going to do a gesture on the uh, uh, on the YouTube channel and you'll get it. Oh, Dikembe Mutombo. That's right. I wagged my finger. Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, okay. Wow. But, okay. I, I he was uh, you know the Elijah one was right there because that was one yeah. of his championship years. So I was yeah. thinking that was he was an incredible force during that era. In fact. Um, 
if I remember correctly, wasn't it Elijah Wan and Clyde Drexler who played for Houston? Right. And the, Phi and Slamma Jamma. Phi Slamma Jamma. That's right. There you go. There there's you go there's a trivia answer. You, you know, it's funny. Somewhere. Looking at uh, uh, Jim Valvano taking uh, uh, NC State. Do you ever see that, like, 30 on 30 or one of those shows where they just concentrate on NC State taking them? That whole yeah. Thing? It's incredible. There's, like, all these chances that they should have lost, and, and they just made it through. It was, just, it was destined. It was their year. Although that, that year was when Matumbo had the uh, – and Denver had the upset of Seattle, right? And that, uh, was that, that was that picture of him – Lying on the floor with the ball over oh, his head, yeah. you know, smiling. <laughs> so that would have been, I mean, that wouldn't have been the championship because. No, no, that was in the first round. That was first in the round, first yeah. round. It was one of the biggest upsets until uh, the Warriors beat Dallas. Ah, okay. yeah, The We Believe Warriors. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah, and that's when uh, Byron, Baron Davis uh, did the slam over AK-47, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was that season, but it wasn't, that wasn't during the, the playoffs because they, uh, 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 Kirilenko wasn't on Dallas. Kirilenko was minute, on, though, but they, no, they were, at that minute, point, I think he was on Utah. No, there was a... But that was during the regular season that, that Baron Davis had that amazing... Really? Run. I thought it yeah. was during one of the playoff games. Okay, no, 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 no. on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, guys. And now, Washington's Dwayne Haskins' unmasked trip to a strip club cost him 40000 and most likely end... Is oh, it's done over. He was he was cut yesterday. Was he? Okay. Yes. Uh, and, uh, two interceptions, a lost fumble, two sacks, and a pivotal game against. I don't want him on the 49ers, By the way, that's uh, yeah. An say answer that. to to anyone thinking that you know the Niners, who are desperate for quarterback, maybe. But I don't I don't want them to to pick up. They C.J. Beathard's a better deal than than uh, than Hassan. Yeah. You know it's kind of crazy too because these guys. They're getting in trouble for being unmasked, but when they're on the field, they're unmasked. And then, yeah, but that's when they've been tested. I, I know, but then even like the guys on the sidelines, you know, everybody has to get tested before they get in. Right. So why are there all the big hooplas about getting fined for not having a mask on the sideline? Because know? they want to send the message to the viewers, you know, that, okay. that they're right. still following that. Now, of course, that message seemed to have gone away with James Harden, who, yeah, you know, did the Little exact same gift. thing, and yet he's playing the very next day that he was, you know, supposedly hanging yeah, out. I, I thought Adam Silver was kind of a little bit more straight-laced, you know, we're going we're gonna to do things by the book. What do you think happened? Uh, 44 points and 17 rebounds the next game is what happened which is, you know, for a guy who didn't practice and spending his night at a strip club, you know, I guess maybe Adam Silver's thinking, hmm, maybe we should send them all to strip club. Yeah. Have 44 <laughs> point yeah, but, but nobody games. knew he was going to score that many points after the strip club. And, and that's for been... a guy who doesn't want to play for Houston. I know. He's capable of a 44-point game with 17 rebounds and on a team he doesn't want to play for. I mean, that yeah. that really makes you wonder. Well, it could be, again, if he, if he just plays so well that he forces a trade somehow, another team is going to go, you know what, this guy, we just – I mean, everybody knows how good he is anyway, but it, rather than him dogging it and, and having a bad attitude, other teams might kind of go, gee, what if he gets disenchanted for, you know – but no team has the salary level that they can afford to trade the players that are necessary to get Harden on board. He's earning like $60 million. Okay, now does, does Harden have the right to take a lesser salary? To no, cap? not be in the, with the collective bargaining agreement. No, not for the next two years. See, He's that's just kind of screwy. Here's a guy who, even if he says, listen, I'm willing to, to give up my salary. He's not, though. Well, but even if he was, let's just put, let's start off with that. If he was, you're still saying he's not even allowed to. Yeah, no, not with the collective bargaining agreement. Okay. That thing is set in stone. I mean, he would have to have the entire contract completely invalidated, which I don't know how you go about doing that, you know, yeah. when a season's already rolling. Well, um, and then, you know, now there were some guys who, let's say, while they were discussing their contract, have said, I'll take less to make room. Right. But once you sign it, they don't. Although the collective bargaining agreement doesn't allow you to just tear that contract up and write a new one. 
especially because the salary cap is already in place. You can't, you can't once the, the season starts, you know, or once the preseason starts, your salaries are all sort of put in concrete. And so you can't, you know, mess around with it and say, oh, well, now I'm going to earn, you know, $5 million a year and we can bring aboard, you know, a bunch of other guys, you know, I'll just take Well, I, I kind of get that because you don't want, you know, one team being over, you know, saturated with superstars. Um, but uh, what happens when guys get hurt? Uh, talk to the Golden State Warriors about that. They're paying, uh, a, you know, uh, uh, Clay Thompson, you know, about $30 million a year, and he can't play at all. That's why they had to, Kelly Oubre winds up being the $60 million man because he only has the contract for $14 million. But because he makes the Warriors go over the salary cap by so much, his hit on the salary cap is over $60 million for so, the Warriors. Now, in that case, uh, so how much could he have – like, let's say he said, okay, I'll only take $10 million. $60 million still against the Warriors. So as soon as you get over the capital. Yep, and you get over it by a certain amount, then the, the penalties go way, way up. And, and where does that money go to? Uh, the Coastal of the League. Oh, interesting. And what does yeah. the league do with it? Uh, that's – well, they're probably, you know, uh, doing that. They, some of it goes to charity, but others, you know, just goes to reinforce the strength of the NBA overall. You know, and okay. I think, and, and what charity would it go to? United Way. Oh, is that what they? they yeah, that's the that, that. Yeah, that's the charity for the NBA. I think that also some of it gets distributed as part of a salary um, uh, sharing agreement between the different player, the different teams. Now that I can see, basically, I mean, that, that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, part of it gets distributed across the entire league. So, but. Uh, 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 yeah, it's it's in that salary cap, while you know supposedly keeping teams competitive, also really locks teams into specific uh, 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 lineups that they can't change even when injury happens. So yeah, it's a, it, the Warriors are definitely suffering from uh, from from the salary cap this year, and uh, Kelly Oubre is the perfect example of what happens when, you know, you, you're, you're up against the wall and you have a major injury. And, and, and if you're Kelly and you go, great, I'm making 14, but, man, this, there's this extra $60 million floating around because of it. Give me some of that. You know? Oh, well, you know, there's going to be a couple of expansion teams added to the NBA, too, pretty soon. And okay. that, I'm sorry to say, but $60 million is chump change True. compared to what they're going to get when they expand two more teams. Oh, yeah, it's got to be, easily. you know, a billion, basically. Yes. You have to, you have to be a billionaire in order to. Yeah, and they're going to probably charge the teams a billion dollars to to join the NBA and start up a new franchise. You know what? They I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it now if you can't put fans in there. But that's the whole thing is that they're, they're not thinking for this year or next year. They're thinking for 10 years from now and, and 20 which, years from now. And which uh, cities are they thinking? Seattle has Seattle. got to get another team. That yeah. was unfair to what happened to yeah. them. And then there's talk that, you know, that they may move some teams, you know, like Memphis may move. Oh. But I think they're going to go to 32 teams. Um, well, they moved from Vancouver to Memphis. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they did. And Memphis isn't really embracing – the Grizzlies, all that much. That's too bad. They were a pretty good team a couple of years ago. Yeah, but they're not so great now. And, and Memphis, you know, doesn't exactly – isn't a hotbed of NBA activity. No, it's more college football, I would think, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, they, they, you know, there's talk about, you know, trying to do more international stuff, trying to put a team in Mexico, trying to put a team in China, trying to put a team in India – you know, they, they're, they, Mexico, they I could see because it's still close enough to Texas that you have, you know, for traveling. But China, I mean, that's just too far to play. They want the ratings, man. They want the ratings. You know, it's just like the, the, the NFL, you know, wants to try to, you know, get into that market. It's going to be larger than the U.S. in just a couple of years. So, yeah, well, basketball definitely has been, you know, an international sport. Football, not, you know, as much. Uh, baseball, yeah, you know, Japan's always been big on baseball. 
and Korea, you know. Korea, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. We may see, you know, the uh, uh, Beijing, uh, you know, uh, the Beijing Bears or, or yeah. uh, Well, know. I guess, I, I mean, I, I could see from a scheduling situation if you have like four or five teams in Asia slash Europe, you know, area, then you basically just, okay, team, you're going to just stay for a month and you're just going to go around the circuit, you know, Korea, Japan, you know. Uh, one one good thing I think about doing something like that is it, it kind of brings the world together a little bit more I think even if there is this uh, you know USA versus you know China there's still it's still pl on the same field you know what yeah, I mean get ready for the 3 a.m. tip off though <laughs> which which you will set your clock for yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so I don't know that's that that is another problem I mean when all those Olympics were happening yeah. in China. You know, and people were dead set about seeing the Olympics happen, you know, live. Live, you know, yeah. Like putting their alarms off at, you know, 3, 4 in the morning. So well, they, 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 I mean, having the Dream Team in 92, I believe, is when it started, was pretty pretty fantastic. You know, it really was, especially even all the other players from the other leagues were just, like, enamored with all of these stars coming from uh, the U.S. Which oh, was, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, for I, years, I it used like to be just college class, players, yeah. you know. And that was kind of unfair because you had Russia – who paid their people, you know, and, and uh, USA had to use college players years ago. Right, right. And once we went pro, we never went back. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to cut to our last trivia question here. Oh, boy. We're talking somewhat hard NBA questions. This one actually is a little harder, I think. Who led the league in assists in the 1980-81 season? 80-81 yeah. season. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So – I mean, this one's a little harder. In fact, I'm not even going to give you the team. It was the Washington Bullets. Washington Bullets. Okay. All right. So that, that's our trivia question. And when we come back, Sports Econ 101 will have some closing comments. So stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman. Kevin Porter. Kevin, Kevin Porter, that is correct. Who led the league in assists in the 1980-81 season? Kevin Porter, that is correct. You are the man. And we're, we're just before we uh, cut out here for our thoughts of the day, you were mentioning they were the Baltimore Bullets, and had, it went all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Yeah, they were. They, they it was about that, but they had to change it because Shimon Perez was assassinated. He was a friend of the owner, and the owner was so heartbroken with the assassination, he didn't want the team to be named after anything violent. Wow. And, but we decided that the Washington Wizards is just – it just doesn't pretty happen. Pretty weak. Pretty weak. Pretty weak, yeah. But then, well, we'll see what they wind up naming uh, the, the football team after. We may be, like, saying, you know, the Wizards isn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like in the old days, like, they had the, the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, both baseball and football, you know, eventually. All right. Are you ready for our thoughts of the day, my friend? Yes. Here we go. It is very easy to defeat someone, but it's very hard to sin someone. I'm not sure what that means. So I mean, to what somebody? I don't know. To sin someone? I might, sin I might have written that one down. I might have written that one down wrong. So we'll go to the next one here. And if you look at what you have in life, you will always have more. If you look at what you don't have in life, you'll never have enough. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Right. And any well, thoughts for the new year? I, I just hope 2021 brings us nothing but change as far as what we've had to get used to in 2020. I totally agree. All right, tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're next gonna year. Tune in next that's, year. Yeah, that's right. Tune in. Well, actually, this is next year already. This is the second. Right? That's so, right. So, but we'll be tuning in with you next year. Correct. Right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective. And we're going to also be asking more sports trivia questions. Next Thanks decade, sports. actually. Next decade. That's right. It starts a new decade. You are correct. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Adios, America. So long.